Well, I'm so glad you're here. And good morning. And I'm so grateful for everyone who participates in this service. They make it so wonderful and meaningful and pave the way for me to talk. <clears throat> so last week, we uh, learned about our Father and how that changed the whole image of God. And we understand that God is our Father because in the beginning we were created by God. God said, let us make humanity in our image and likeness. We have that spirit. One of the things that we think about when we think about God creating us, we think that because we have a body, God has a body. Sometimes we need to see God in a body and that's when we allow the Christ to take that role. So everything that is created in Genesis is created in spirit, in this wonderful atmosphere that we call the kingdom of heaven. And um, we, God is called Father by Jesus <clears throat> to bring us into a relationship, but at that time it was patriarchal so uh, society, and God was the head, of, not God, well, God was, uh, but the father was the head of the family and was in charge of every decision and was a loving father and provided for his family and protected. So our God, our father, is a loving provider, protector. And then we discovered that God is wholeness. God is always moving toward wholeness. God can't do anything except move toward wholeness. God is good. God is absolute, changing good. And he moves to bring that goodness to us. Thy kingdom come. I talked last week about we all have a kingdom. It's our consciousness. And it's usually not populated with God. God doesn't have a very good place in our consciousness. <clears throat> it's filled with all of our thoughts and ideas of who we are our place in the world and what the world is like, and most of those are wrong. But we've been taught them since we were a child. So thy kingdom come, let God's kingdom, this heaven, come into our consciousness to let it express in us. Thy will be done. Remember God's will for us is absolute good. God is absolute good, and that's what God desires for us, absolute good. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Our part in participating in the creation of this world is to bring that kingdom of heaven into our earthly experience. That goodness is there in the kingdom of heaven. So now we come to give us this day our daily bread. That is not a plea. That is a statement that God gives us our daily bread. God knows that we need sustenance, that we need food to ingest into our body so it gives us strength. One of the things we don't realize is our kingdom or our consciousness also needs food. It needs spiritual food that we can take into our consciousness and digest it so it strengthens our consciousness and our awareness of God. Our daily bread. God provides for us. You know, in 12 Step, we have this uh, uh, quote that we say, live one day at a time, and that's what God, sa God is saying here. The prayer is saying here. Live one day at a time. That doesn't mean we don't do any planning or we don't participate in anything. It means that we do it now and don't uh, overdo it and reach out and take our attention away from God. We let God help us with that planning. God gives us this day our daily bread and God knows that we need food. And how does God give us that food? Spiritual 
So in Genesis, remember that God created everything. There wasn't anything until God began to create things. And one of the things that God created in the spiritual realm and the kingdom of heaven was everything that we need, the physical needs, to live a fulfilled and joyous life. He made the earth. He made it rain. He, he made things to grow. And the important thing is that God made us last in First Genesis. God made everything that would support us in our daily life first and then creates us. And all of this right now is in the kingdom of heaven here. We don't get a body <laughs> until second Genesis. And we are created first in second Genesis. And God creates Adam and breathes that spirit that is us into Adam and into us, our daily bread. Now, God has provided this garden for Adam to live in, to take care of, to provide daily food. But he's all alone. He doesn't like being alone too much. So God gives him a helper and someone who is equal to him. We don't think of it that way because of the way the Bible is translated. In some translations, it says that the woman is equal to the man. So here we have Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden taking care of it and taking care of one another. Forgive us this day. No, not forgive us this day. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. At the end of this prayer, Jesus says, if you don't forgive others, God won't forgive you. I thought God forgave everything. But you see, if we don't forgive others, then we aren't open to that goodness of God, the kingdom of heaven, because we are energy beings. Unforgiveness is an energy that lives in our consciousness, and it keeps or inhibits that flow of goodness into our lives. And sometimes, you know, it's really hard to forgive, really hard. But it's kind of arrogant, too, because when we don't forgive, we're saying that God doesn't know what's right and wrong. And the other person who did the offense just goes about their business. Don't even know, unless you treat them a little meanly. So forgiveness and letting it go is about us and opening ourselves to the greater good. The next uh, part is kind of puzzling because it says, there's two different ways to say it. Do not lead us, lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, I've looked and researched this idea of don't lead us into temptation. Lead us. Why would God lead us into temptation? And as I did my research, everybody is trying to make that right without saying don't leave us in temptation. But God does lead us into temptation. When Jesus was baptized... And the Holy Spirit came down upon him and said, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. Then the Spirit leaded Jesus into the wilderness to be tested, to be tempted. And when he's there, he's uh, being tested to see if he knows what he knows what he knows. Does he know who he is, or is he going to give in to all this stuff that the adversary is promising him. And we get led into tem temptation in our spiritual growth. Everything is going along fine, and then everything falls apart. 
and we think, oh my God, what did I do wrong? We run around and try to fix it in different ways. But we need to understand that God is in charge. And we are being tested to see if we know what, he, what we know, what we know. If we have digested that spiritual food so it lives in our consciousness. Now, leave us that in temptation is we don't want to be left there. In this testing, we don't want to be left there. And remember, the angels came to minister to Jesus and he was ready for his work. So sometimes we're tested and sometimes we're not. But what we're doing is we're making ourselves open to all the goodness that God has. Um, when I was in seminary, there was a fellow student named Jane. And she had um, uh, finished the first year and she had paid her tuition. She had the tuition because of the goodness of the place she had worked and the loving people of her church. So she had her first year of tuition paid for. The first quarter of second quarter of, of the tuition, she didn't have any money. She was working part time. She didn't have enough to stretch. And so about 10 days before the tuition is due, she's beginning to wonder what she's going to do. The interesting thing is she had this kind of what I would call neutral attitude. She's not worried about it, but she's not really sure it's going to get there. So she, she just forces her to know that God is her source. And we see that God is our source because he gives us our daily bread. Everything else is a channel. So she wonders where this channel is going to open and if it's going to open. Maybe this isn't her thing to do after all, even though everything worked together in divine order. And she prayed and she asked and she was led into this. Maybe she only needed the first year. It wasn't her thing to do. So she just kept on, and the days passed, and the tuition didn't come. And the day that the tuition was due, one of her students hollered at her. She was going to the inn for lunch. And Sally hollered at her, stop a minute, I want to talk to you. Now, these were fellow students, but they weren't friends. They were friendly, but they weren't friends. And Sally said, walk with me for a minute. And they began to walk. And Sally says, I keep getting this intuition that your tuition isn't paid. And Jane didn't say anything. And she says, I'm getting this message. Is your tuition paid? And Jane said, no. Sally says, I just came into this whole bunch of money. I'll never spend it all. Let me pay your tuition. Now, Jane could have been tempted to see if she could get a loan, call her parents or call her friends, let the church know, but she didn't feel led to do that. It was tempt temptation, but she felt strongly that she really needed to let God take care of it. And she did. Even though she's not called mother in the prayer, she did. We see temptation too in the story of Adam and Eve. Because in this second chapter, this wonderful garden, all the stuff that supports Adam and Eve is there and they're taking care of it. And remember, God says, don't eat this apple. Don't eat this tree, because it's a tree of good and evil. So Eve is wandering around the garden, and she comes to this tree, and there's a snake in it. 
And he, you know, a snake in the grass. Um, and he begins to talk her into eating the apple. You know, it's really good. Here, just smell it. It's really good. She gives in and she eats the apple and shows how good it is. So she goes to Adam and gives it to him to eat. Did you notice Adam didn't say no? <laughs> this is about our feeling nature and our consciousness. And we are tempted from this feeling nature to do things that are attached to the world but block the spirit. And you know what happened after they ate the apple. So, leave us not in temptation. Lead us not into te temptation. But deliver us from evil. Have you ever noticed that the word evil is spelled, if you spell it backwards, it's spelled. What does it spell? Live. <laughs> live. Live. It spells live. So how do we live? Deliver us from evil. Help us, God. Help us to focus more fully on you so we can bring this wonderful kingdom of heaven through us onto earth. Deliver us from evil. Let us remember to consult God, whatever we do. We forget a lot. We forget a lot, but God doesn't care because God always answers us whenever we ask. The only thing is, is our consciousness open enough so that we can hear you see, and that's unforgiveness blocks that flow. So deliver us from evil. Deliver us from all the effects of the world that we have accepted as being true. Our Father, who art in heaven, we are brothers and sisters and God is our spiritual father. Hallowed be thy name. The name of God is wholeness. We are created in the image and likeness of God. So our spiritual nature is wholeness too. Our father who art in heaven, who has created this wonderful world for us. Thy kingdom come God thy kingdom come. We open ourselves to this goodness of the kingdom in heaven so we can live happily and fulfilly. Thy will be done. God is absolute good. God has created us, so how can we be anything but good? And let thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom comes through us, not to us. That is all about God. Give us this day our daily bread. Trust God. God is the source. God is the source of our good. God is the source of our salary, of our retirement, of all of them, our investments. We don't see it that way. But God is the source of that. And those are channels through which God blesses us with our daily needs, our daily food. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive, forgive others your trespasses as you have forgiven them. Release this anger and this resentment. It's not doing you any good. Sometimes it lodges in the body and we get sick. Let it go. Lead us not into temptation. Help us, God, to know when we're being tested. And help us, God, to know when we're just getting all involved 
trying to plan and fix things. Deliver us from that. Leave us not in temptation. Help us, God, to get out of that, to become whole, more whole than we were before. And deliver us from evil. Deliver us from living backwards, because that's what evil is. Living from the outside in instead of the inside out. From living and letting this physical world make our decisions to moving in to our world. The world that is God, that is in touch with this wonderful universe of good that we just don't get that it's there. And forgive again, as Jesus says, forgive. And I am not going into God is the kingdom, the power, and glory. And the reason I'm not doing that is because it's in some, bi some Bibles and some not. And in my Bible, it's not there. So, of course, I did some research. And some are just swear that that is part of the Lord's Prayer. There is evidence that the kingdom and the power and the glory was added by the Christians of the first year. Because the first part of the prayer is about God and God in our lives. The second part of the prayer is about God, about us, and how we connect with God. And they wanted us, when we prayed, to bring our attention back to God. So God is the kingdom and the power and the glory, is everywhere pleasant, present and wants absolute good for us. And that's the truth. <laughs>